Hey friends, welcome to Weekly Word with yours truly, Pastor Nate. This is my chance to check in with you, to let you know what's happening in the life of our church, and to invite you to reflect with me on this next week's gospel lesson. This next Sunday is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, the 30th of June. And Lord willing, by the time you receive this, I will be on vacation with my family, and uh, I express gratitude to you for allowing me to have some time away to refresh and uh, reconnect with my family and spend some time in God's creation. Uh, I ask that you pray for me as I'll be praying for you and holding you all in my heart until I return on July the 7th. I want to encourage all of you to come to our summer small group. We have uh, different leaders for each week who are going to be leading us through uh, reflection and conversation on the parables of Jesus. Uh, we gather at uh, uh, 6.30 p.m. each Wednesday to, uh, to share some time together, to share a meal, and to reflect on the parables. Uh, this next Sunday, we hear from one of my very favorite stories in the Gospel of Mark. And this story shows up in the other Gospels, at least in uh, Matthew and in Luke. Uh, but Mark has a very different way of telling this story. Uh, he tells the story as a kind of sandwich. <laughs> there are two pieces of bread, as it were, that make up uh, what we might call the main story, and there's another story that's inserted into the middle of that story. And uh, it's very interesting because there is a ruler of the synagogue, a very important person who comes to Jesus seeking healing. That's the, the bread, as it were, on either side of the, the main meat, uh, the main uh, part of the sandwich. Uh, but what initially appears to be the case is that this thing that comes in the middle is an interruption. Uh, Jesus is on the way to heal the leader of the synagogue, the very important person's daughter. And along the way, uh, he is by all appearances interrupted by this woman who sneaks up behind him and touches his cloak and means to dart off back into the crowd. She is healed of her long-standing ailment. And Jesus turns around and says, Who touched me? His disciples all react with consternation. What do you mean, who touched you? This is a big crowd. We have no idea who touched you. But Jesus calls this woman. It's not enough for him to have uh, let some power go out from him, her, himself for her and for her to dart away into the crowd. Jesus wants to encounter her in a personal way, to engage with her, to speak to her, to address her as a whole person. And Jesus says to her, daughter, daughter, notice that term of intimacy, daughter, your faith has made you well. We get back to the main, the main story, and uh, Jesus learns that the daughter of the official of the synagogue has died. Uh, but he, he speaks to her. He speaks to her, and he raises her to life, even though she's died. And, and we learn that uh, Jesus never really exactly needed to be in a hurry. There was no urgency necessarily for him to get there to prevent her from dying. He can speak the word and grant her life. So this story is just packed with significance. But one of the things that I take away from this story is that Jesus does not see this woman that everybody else sees as insignificant as having less value. Jesus doesn't see her as an interruption. He sees her as a beloved child of God, uh, a person worthy of deep love and respect and care and intimacy. And in the same way, those of us who feel that we're insignificant, uh, God doesn't see us that way. God sees us as persons worthy of respect and love. Jesus shows us what it looks like 
uh, to treat other people as persons beloved by God. That's a powerful message, and I pray that we can remember it in the days ahead. Let's pray together. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you soon.